We're out in Kemp, Texas today, getting ready to build a pad. That's what it's all about. Got a little bit of cloudiness, but maybe there won't be any rain. Been cleaning out the filters, greasing this guy up. Brandon's getting it ready for us. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of mud. A little bit of mud still left on here. Filter was extremely dirty, but thankfully Brandon had this little, uh, this little nothing, kind of a blower here. I don't even think this would blow dry my beard. No, it's not big. Barely, barely puts off any air. Can always count on Brandon for the micro tools. He's always got the little bitty wrenches, tools. You know, I got limited space here to store stuff. <laughs> He's literally got the biggest truck on the road. He's got a 5,500 Dodge with these five foot toolboxes. All right, I'm gonna try to get something done. We'll talk about this build. How many square foot is this, do you know? 2,400. 2,400 square foot of under roof? Yeah. No shop? I mean, wood shop? It's got a carport, Car open, an open carport. Open carport, 2,400 square foot. Here we go. Let's get it going. You can see I'm in the OG today. I was driving this a little more, but we had to supplement some vehicles and I wasn't driving it. So now I'm back in it which uh, this is really nice, it fits my, fits my uh, Milwaukee here drawers. I don't have much tools in here because I just really loaded some up in here this morning. Got a couple measuring tapes, got my laser. So we'll get all that out here. This is the Topcon, this is what I'm using here. RL HSA not sponsored but it works so a couple things to note when we're trying to start a project like this I'm gonna check the elevations it looks pretty flat so it should be pretty good still want to check and verify that see what kind of soap we're gonna have on one side or the other when we got trucks that are bringing in dirt I think we already got a few loads in we'll probably run string line on three sides just to give us a basis. Brandon's got a couple more stakes to put out, so here in just a minute, we're gonna get this thing going. There you go, we got the ground scrape. We're gonna set our elevation from here. It's pretty level all the way across. Just got rid of some of that vegetation and we got trucks rolling so i'm about to start filling this in but we're going to mark everything off stake by stake and then run some string line as well across there so we can kind of see the elevation as we go so that's what we got okay well i'm going to try to update you guys on what's happening out here my battery died so i had to Take a minute. The word is slow. That's what the word is. But here we are. I have, let me just explain to you how this works. Nothing goes to waste. So first I spent time kind of breaking off some of that vegetation for the grass that was there. Then I came back around and I'm using that on the sides, tapering that and we're building up to our lines that we had here. I'll show you guys a little bit more how I'm packing this in here. You can see I probably got maybe 40% of the pad covered. And I've got a couple loads here. I just left and uh, came back and I'm about to get back going here. I had to run and get some fuel. I wanna talk to you about something that's kind of happened on this build. I tell you guys all the time, why it's important to do a soil test. Well, this is technically kind of East Texas for us. It's, it falls in a spot where the soil is really not super great. Uh, I'm gonna try to get out of the wind, so I'll talk to you a little bit. The soil is not super great, so we did a soil test. 
and I believe this was like maybe a, a five, which basically means five inches of heave. What you're concerned about with a pad site is the heave because your water tables fill up and the ground through, through the groundwater moves the earth up and down. So as you have uh, drought, it comes down. As you have a lot of water, it comes up. So the idea is compaction and to have your soil to maintain moisture so that you're not uh, having that heat. So you want to be pretty close to a maximum uh, with your moisture and you want it to be maintained in in your slab as far as your pad goes but here the situation is it's uh, with the soil test the geotechnical report it tells us that it's not any it's just not it's kind of like some of the worst soil when it comes to the heave so you're gonna that means five inches of heave that you could have the ground move every year and I believe that's what it was on this build but anything like one or two not that big a deal uh, now we're always using select field but that's really not going to be enough for this build so one of the things that we are going to be doing here is the recommendation from the engineer to remove four foot i believe is what it was of the soil or 10 foot i can't remember exactly it was it was going to be to remove a lot of the soil and then get the compaction all that kind of stuff um, or you could do chemical injections and on this build it made a little more sense for them to do the chemical injection so the company's going to come and do chemical injections on this once i get the pad done this is kind of uh what happens sometimes that's why it's important to do a soil test that's why it's important to get advice from the engineer as well so there's a lot of information you can gain from that uh, but ultimately it tells us what we're going to do when we come out here as well as uh, for any reinforcement and that's what we'll be doing here on this build that just gives you a little bit of insight of what can happen early on in a project like this um, by doing some of those tests so all right i'm gonna get back to work we got the rest of this pad to build let's get it going Okay, well, guys, I believe we've got it done. Not too bad, seeing as it was going really slow. By lunchtime, I only had like half of it, and then I, they got me like four trucks running. So I got it all here, and it's only four o'clock. Really, really good. So I believe there'll be like a parking garage on this side, living quarters on this side, or a parking car covered area. I think it's 2,400 square foot under roof. Should be pretty exciting to see. And we're standing on the pad, so that's exciting for the clients. They're super pumped. Our client has been following us since OG, like original days. So it's kind of a fulfillment of things for them to build out here on their property. It's pretty exciting. So we're pumped for them. Uh, there'll be a lot more to come we're going to next have chemical injections going out here and then we'll begin our site work but right now we got to figure out where we're going to get the water if they can't get it from a fire hydrant because they're the the water department's telling them like it could be six to eight weeks before they can come just set a little meter on the fire hydrant that's kind of weird but uh so hopefully they get that figured out otherwise we got to get some frack tanks in here for the storage for the water we'll have to run it off their regular hose fill those up and then they can come in here and do all the chemical injections they will basically go until the re until there's refusal for the water uh, they will put those injections all the way into the ground uh, the water is kind of a transportation for the chemicals so you take the water as far as it'll go with the chemicals and then those the water will dissipate and the chemical stays there and hardens and gives you a solid ground uh, for as far as stabilization goes so that's something that is a cool little trick but 
it does add cost to the build but whether you're going to do piers which piers i don't think was an option here it was either to dig five feet we'd have to dig five feet in the ground all this dirt remove it and put like select fill here or we would put our pad and then put the chemical injections and i believe that five feet is because he had a a five heave on the geotechnical report that means it will it will move five inches so i think there's a foot of select fill that they request for every inch of heath i want to say correct me if i'm wrong in the comments below if you guys want to see more content like this don't forget to subscribe to the channel we're building barnuminiums right here in the heart uh land of texas this is just going to be one epic barndo i want you guys to follow along to the end kemp texas kemp barndo coming soon i'm josh helm wishing you all the best thanks for watching texas best